Today, I've set myself a bit of a challenge. I've got the A6000 and the kit lens, and I wanna see if I can get some good shots with it. And to up the temptation, I've got my A7 IV in my bag. Can I avoid the temptation and just shoot with this? Or will that temptation be too much? got the sunrise going down it's around about six o'clock so I've got two hours before sunset so I'm hoping to get some nice light I'm hoping to get some great shots with this little camera right already spotted one image it's not that good but it's okay but it's kind of my warm-up image Now, I probably got here a bit late. It's a shame the sun isn't on this sty because it is on the tree in the background. The sun has dropped behind the hill to the west, which has caused this foreground to not really be usable. I'll try and bring it back in post and you'll already see what I've done with that image, but it's just a shame that sun's not on this sty. <sighs> Note to self, come to the location with plenty of time, especially when you're in the mountains. And that's the thing I'm finding when you are in the mountains, they do block the sun a lot earlier than you think. So you can see you've got this big shadow in the foreground. Now coming out to the lake might not have been a good idea. There are tons of midges and they kind of come and go. But I'm starting to itch all over already. Now one thing I like about this scene here is we've got this wall and the path leading up to the tree and some nice clouds and blue sky in the background. So if I zoom in and get my shadow out of the shot, I'm gonna focus on the tree and take the shot. That light is a bit direct. I would want it at a bit of an angle. So before this shadow creeps along this way, I'm gonna go up there and get a shot looking down at the tree so it'll be side lit. Gonna focus on the tree. I'm gonna shoot at F8. Tree focused. I made a video a while back on the seven tips of photography to actually help. In it, one tip was keep it simple. And then the next tip was to shoot a panorama. Now panoramas are surprisingly simple. If you struggle with getting good exposure, what you do is put it in aperture priority and make a note of what settings you've got. So I've got 1 1 25th of a second, F8, ISO 100. I'll switch it across to manual and I'll change those settings. So it was 1 1 25th, F8, ISO 100. Now those settings aren't gonna change at all. The only other setting that you need is to be able to switch it to manual focus. So I'll focus on the tree and then I'll switch it to manual focus. And then I'll go one, I'll make sure I get overlap, make sure I get overlap, make sure I get overlap. What you're basically doing is keeping the exposure exactly the same, you're keeping the focus exactly the same, and then all you have to do is overlap the shots. As long as that shutter speed's high enough for you to shoot handheld, you'll be able to stitch them together. And a program like Lightroom stitches them together so quickly and so easily that it's a skill that you really need to know. And it's not that hard. So try it the next time you're out and let me know how you get on, either by email or commenting on this video. Sorry about that, I switched to teacher mode and this is more of a challenge video. But panoramas are so easy to shoot just as long as you know how to shoot them and then how to stitch them together. I'm not gonna lie, the light is hitting the tips of the mountains over there and I'm desperate to get my A7 IV with a 28 to 200 to really reach that mountain top. But even though I don't want to, I'm gonna resist at the moment. Right, let's keep going. The 
hardest thing to photograph a sheep because by the time you've got your camera out, the perfect scene where they were sat underneath a big mountain in the background is gone. This is why it's good to have your camera out all the time. So that's Snowden in the background. That's looking fantastic with a patchy cloud on it. Now this is where it gets interesting. If I just wait for that wind to drop off, I might just get a reflection of the mountain in the background. Just as I sat down, the wind did ruffle up this front bit, but the wind is coming from over there and it's blowing that way. So I've got the flattest part of the water. Let's see what we can get here. So I've got as low as possible to get this flattest part of the water to get the reflection. It is a little bit ripply, but you do get some kind of symmetry in there. Now this looks really interesting. Got another abandoned hut. I think this might look really good from up behind it looking down onto that in the distance. So let's see how that goes. Now, how amazing is this scene? I'm gonna try and use this as a foreground element. Lake as the midground, mountain as the background. So it's a pretty obvious composition. Might have to shoot a bit of a pano and because of the plastic boxes hidden in this hut, might have to Photoshop those out a little bit, but they are quite distracting because they're bright red. Ooh. So I basically had to offset a little bit to line up this building with that mountain. But I kind of like that. Shooting at f16, it is hard to fit it all in with the 16 millimeter lens. I am gonna shoot a pano as well. So I'm gonna switch it to manual mode. Let's see what we got. So I'm gonna start on this side. Now this is absolutely fantastic. I love scenes like this where you've got side light coming in and hitting everything. It just gives it depth and detail. Now surprisingly, I'm enjoying using this camera. It's small and light. It seems to be taking some nice shots. Now I have to admit, this is where I am missing a long telephoto lens. And with this camera, something like the 55 to 200 millimeter, I think that's it, or the 55 to 250. That'll be perfect in picking out these details on the mountain range in the distance. There's all of these rock crevices and cracks and everything in there. I'd love just to zoom in on those, but with 55 millimeters, it's not quite close enough. Nope, <laughs> I did think about getting my camera out then. I'm not gonna. Now the light is catching the building over there really nicely. Looking at the quality of the shots, I'm gonna zoom in on them. The quality's there, they're a little bit softer than the a7 IV and one of the G Master lenses, but all in all, the quality is fantastic with this. So I've walked all the way around, I've come away from that building, but I don't think there's anything else to photograph up this end. So I'm gonna go back, gonna get a closer shot of that building, because I think that sun is going behind the mountains. So if you look that way, I really underexpose it. The sun is going to be going behind that mountain really soon. So, need to get back over to the hut over here and that top bit. Yes. So that's much better. I've got a lot closer to this building with the mountains in the background and I've been able to fill the frame with it. And when people say zoom with their feet, this is exactly what they mean. Now, I'm going to be chasing that light still. So I'll get one more shot of this, and then I'm gonna to go to the top of that hill. Now 
that was a lot of fun and more fun than I thought it would be. It's so light and small, it'd be interesting to see what the shots are like. Now, if you're wondering whether I cheated or not and took the a7 IV out, I've got to admit, I did. But to be fair, it's only for test shots to see what it looks like compared to this. So even though I failed at not getting the a7 IV out, I really did enjoy using the a6000 and the kit lens. Now, one thing I would say about this, and if you shoot with the a6000 or any of the iterations up to the a6600, I would say get a telephoto lens. The long lens for the APS-C camera, that's a fantastic lens. And then also the 10 to 18, that's the super wide. This camera or any of the A6000 series cameras and those two lenses would be a fantastic setup and it would be so light. You'd have this, two lenses, that's it. Maybe a tripod, maybe some filters and you're set. Photography is so modular that you can slowly build it up as you go. I think it took me about five years to build up a set of three lenses. I was a hobbyist. I took my time, I stayed with a kit lens for so long. So don't worry if you've just got the kit lens and a camera like this. Plan to go to locations like I'm at now and take some shots and take as many shots as you can. Memory is cheap, batteries are cheap and you can get loads of shots, take them back and learn from those shots and learn from what you're doing.